Welcome back to Spinnaker Sailing Club. Today we're going to be looking at some real basic information about race starts. So we're aiming this at those of you who are new to racing, possibly new to sailing as well, and the aim is to give you just the key information so that you can start a race uh, and get around the course successfully. So the information we look at is where to get the information about the race start, how the race start sequence of flags works, and a little bit of advice about how you actually start your race to give you the best possible chance. And at the end of this video, we'll then just talk about a few of the differences which are special to Spinning Club here and how we run our regular club racing. So first of all, let's look at where we can get this information about our starts from. So, first of all, we've got the Racing Rules of Sailing. Now these are updated every four years. So we're currently on the 2017 to 2020 version. So next year, 2021, there'll be some slight amendments probably. And that's sort of the overall document. And that's what gives us all races uh, their general background. Each race will then have a specific set of sailing instructions. So I've got a set here which I was involved with a few years ago. So this is two and a bit sides of A4 paper. And it's basically saying exactly how that event will work in relation to the racing rules of sailing. So that's what you can read before the day of the race. Come the day of the race, there'll then be a race officer's briefing, uh, either before each race or before the start of the series of days races. Really, really good chance for you to go and hear from the person running the race and what they're expecting, how they're going to run the race, and whether there's been any last minute amendments to those saving instructions. This is also your opportunity to ask questions, and I'll encourage you, if you're not sure anything, ask a question. Ask a race officer to find out exactly what they are expecting, or even if you know there's some friendly people in the group, just ask them another one of the races. Most sailors are quite happy to help, and we want to encourage more people to join in the racing with us. So now we've got our information, what we're going to talk about is choosing where to start on that start line, uh, but also which tack we want to start from. So, just talk about what we've got laid out here. We've got the wind from the top of the board blowing down. We've got this yellow boy here, which is our windward mark, our first mark of the race. Then we've got our start line just here. Got our red marker here for the port end of our start line and the green one here for our starboard end. Now, quite often, this starboard end is where the committee boat is anchored. However, if your race is being started from a hut ashore, you may find there's two boys or a boy and a post to create that start line on the water. Now, we'll start just one boat here. When we start a race, we normally would like to start with right of way. So, generally speaking, People try to start their races on starboard tack from the starboard end of the start line. And this way, as they cross the line and go up that first beat to windward, you've got, if you've got other boats on port coming across, they will have to give way to you. So, generally speaking, people start on starboard from the starboard end. However, sometimes our start line won't be laid out nicely at 90 degrees to wind like this. Sometimes one end or the other is closer to the wind. And if you've got the port end closer to the wind, so the line's got a port bias, it can sometimes pay to start on port tack from that port end. So here we see the boat starting on port tack, compared to the boat starting on starboard tack, has got a lot less distance to go. However, this strategy is not without risk. If this boat here on port tack is a little bit late starting, or they've not quite worked out the line right, it's very easy to find the rest of the fleet coming across on starboard. And as that boat on port, you have to give way to everyone, and you very quickly end up being pushed to the back. So my suggestion would be that unless you're absolutely sure that starting on port will pay off, would be to always start on starboard. The other thing we can consider at this point is what all the other boats around us are going to do to us. So we said, normally, we want to start on starboard at the starboard end of the line. And this is what everyone tries to do very often. And very quickly, a lot of boats will start building up. At this point, it's very easy to be pushed over the line a little bit too early, or possibly to even get stuck behind someone uh, or even have a little bump. So, 
sometimes on a very crowded start line, if you are new to racing uh, and you're looking to have a comfortable race, enjoy yourself and avoid a little bit of this pressure, sometimes it may be worth considering starting a little further down the line. It's not necessarily the best position because these other boats may end up covering your sand and stealing a bit of your wind, but it's uh, stressful and if it avoids a lot of the carnage around that start end of the mark, it can make things a little bit easier for you in your first few races. So, we've got all our information about how to start our race. We know where we want to start on the line, and in this case we're going to start on the starboard tack at the starboard end of the line. What we can look at now is the actual start sequence and how we're going to start our race. So, there's a few different countdowns which are used at various races around the country. What we're going to look at at the moment is five minutes, four minutes, one minute, go. So each one of those time intervals, whether it's five minutes or one minute, will have a sound and a flag change. And that flag change is the flag will either go up or the flag will come down. So we'll start off at our five minute marker and at five minutes we'll have sound as I said and our class flag will go up. So here I've got flag Oscar, which is the same club as what we use as our class flag for the optimists. Depending on what boat you're saying or where you are, you may have a different flag. And at this point, I want my boat to be in the general vicinity of the start line, or I want to be getting myself up there fairly quickly. Because once this countdown started, we really want to be operating around that start line. Fast forward a little bit. The four minute signal, and the preparatory flag will go up. And this flag is fairly standard, it's what the second signal is for the vast majority of races. And this gives us an opportunity to start our race watch or sync up our race watch with the main race countdown if we're using one. And also just gives us a little reminder, yet yeah, we're into that countdown. At this point, I really want to be in that general vicinity of the start line, making sure I know where I want to start and keeping an eye on that time. And as we progress closer and closer to the next time interval, about one minute, I'm going to be focusing more and more on guessing my position when I want to start. Now, one minute is another sound, and our preparatory flag will come down. So at this point, I know I really want to be getting near to where I want to start my race. And now there's two ways I could get myself into this position. I could either, a minute or 30 seconds before the start, get myself nice and close to that starboard end of the start line on the right tack, and then try and hover. And I do this by controlling my power and adjusting uh, where I'm heading to try and hover there and then pull my sail in and off I go as the start signal sounds. Now a lot of boats will try and do this and it can get very crowded and depending on the conditions it can also be quite tricky to hold yourself in one position. So another method you may see people use is in the one minute they'll pass the start line and they'll sail away for sort of 20 to 30 seconds. They'll then turn around and sail back and they'll control their speed so they hit that start line at go. Finally, we reach the go, final sign signal. The flag comes down, and as that flag comes down, that's our single signal we can start. And what we're aiming for is to be going as fast as possible crossing that line, ideally with no other boats stealing any wind from our sail. What is really important at this point is we don't poke our bow of our boat over that start line before the start signal. If we do, we need to come back. Now, there's a couple of things which can happen if people cross that line early, which we'll briefly talk about now. The first is if the race committee can identify who has crossed the line early, they will fly flag x-ray. And what this means is that you need to normally dip your boat back below the start line and cross it again without impeding any other boats. So if there's only one or two boats which have been over early and they're only just over, that's normally what will happen. They'll fly, flag x-ray, and boats which are over early just need to dip down and cross the line again. And there's a time limit to that. Uh, it's generally within the first four minutes of race they have to do that, otherwise they'll be disqualified. Next option is if the majority of the fleet are over too early or the race committee can't identify who was over early, 
Uh, and this normally happens, you know, when there's a bit of tide possibly and it's pushed the feet over that line early. They will fly the general recall, or the first substitute flag as it's known here. So this is a general recall signal. And what it means is loads of people are over that line early and they're going to restart the whole race because that would be the fairest thing to do. So that's what generally happens. However, if you find that people are repeatedly over the line early, or there's been several general recalls, the race committee and the race officer do have options to impose more stringent penalties, and that could be they send you around the line before you cross back through it, or even instant disqualification from that race if you are over the line early. Other flags are flown to indicate when these rules are in effect. Uh, we're not going to remind you of all those flags just now, but it is worth knowing before you go racing. That's a real brief introduction to racing and how to do your racing starts. Key things I'd like you to remember and take away from this is that your racing rules are sailing and the race sailing instructions will give you all the information you need before the day of the race. On the day of the race, attend the race briefing and if you're still not sure about anything, ask questions. When you're on the start line, if in doubt about where to start, my advice would be to start on starboard tack from the starboard end of the line, which is normally where the committee boat is. If you are over the line early, it doesn't necessarily mean you're disqualified, but you do need to come back either around the end of the start line and start again, or dip your boat back below the start line, and then you can carry on to your first mark. Finally, above all else, remember the rules, avoid crashes at all costs, if in doubt, steer away, especially for getting used to sailing. For those of you who start the Spinnaker Cod, uh, we use a very similar system, except instead of it starting five minutes, four minutes, one minute go, we start our races normally at three minutes, two minutes, one minute go. This just allows us to squeeze in the starts a little bit quicker, and as we're a fairly small lake, it's quite easy to do that. Remember, there are other systems out there as well, and you always find out the information on your system in your sailing instructions.